Regal's DSA 815TG is a great tool for testing out antennas and other accessories to find out exactly what's going on. Here we're using a little whip antenna. I'm attaching it to a small VSWR bridge, which in turn is attached to the DSA 815 spectrum analyzer. We can see that immediately that there is a, an indication of the frequency of resonance of this antenna, showing that we can use the DSA to find out much more about how the antenna works. It's a simple whip antenna. Immediately we can see on a 1 GHz span that there is a low frequency resonance at around about 150 MHz. Let's take a closer look at the antenna itself. There is a base loading coil which we're going to adjust in order to see what happens. The tracking generator sends a signal into the VSWR bridge. The bridge is then sending an error signal into the spectrum analyzer. At a single frequency of resonance, you can see that the antenna is operating. You can tell it's the antenna because if we interfere with it, you can see the effect. Being able to see dynamically is a major advantage of a spectrum analyzer over, for example, uh, over, for example a, a network analyzer or a, a vector analyzer for an antenna. These tend to give static readings but a spectrum analyzer shows you dynamically what's going on. It allows you to experiment. For example, we're going to compress the loading coil. When we increase the inductance of the loading coil, the resonant frequency of the antenna moves downwards. If we add capacitance by touching the antenna, you can see that it moves downwards. Let's take a look at that in close-up. The shift is a few megahertz and it's quite significant even when we touch the end of the antenna and add capacitance at that point. Here we can also see all on one screen not only the quarter wave resonance but also the 5 8 resonance of the antenna. This is another advantage over a dynamic reading spectrum analyzer. Let's zoom in on just the quarter wave peak, which is the main peak of resonance. Now we're going to trim the antenna so that we bring it into band. It's currently resonant at about 132 megahertz. When we snip some off the end of the antenna, we've shortened its quarter wave wavelength, thereby increasing the resonant frequency to 137 and then closer to the 2 meter amateur band at around about 140 megahertz. You can see that this antenna is now getting close to what we need. Being able to use markers is a major advantage because it enables you to display and record information on the screen of the analyzer. What we're going to do is move a marker down to the base of the peak right now you can see that it's now tuned to around 145.75 megahertz. The markers functions in the DSA815 are extensive. There are many features that you can use. Let's select a different marker. This time we're going to use the marker function button on the analyzer to set a different function. The marker function we're going to use is a 3dB bandwidth of that trough. This enables us to measure the bandwidth of the trough and get an indication of how sharply tuned the antenna is. You can see that this particular antenna is indeed very sharply tuned. It has a resonance bandwidth of about 1.5 MHz. The antenna, of course, is more effective than that over a wider range, but it's useful to be able to read peaks and their bandwidths in this way using markers on screen. Now let's do some more trimming. This time we're going to introduce an error into the antenna by tuning it even higher. We're going to take it out of the amateur band by snipping a further length off it. You can see that the curve immediately jumps upwards to above 150 megahertz. 
the center of this trace is 150 and the peak the trough is just to the right of that central band so the the extensive features of Rigol's analyzer are extremely useful for sounding out all sorts of components and experimenting to get best value from your equipment